Productions from Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for 10 rounds and it's in a lightweight division. Our referee is Samuel Vruet. Introducing first in the blue corner, wearing the purple trunks with the black trim. He weighed in at an even 136 pounds. This young pugilist has 19 wins, only one loss, with 13 knockouts. He is currently ranked number nine by the USBA. From Newark, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, here is one, El Flaco Negron. Negron. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the red and blue trim. He tipped in at an even 135 pounds. He has 12 wins, three losses with six knockouts. The former New York State Junior Lightweight Champion from the Big Apple of New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Petey, the Mumbo Kid Nieves. Nieves. 23-year-old Peter Nieves, whose last fight was back in January against Kevin Kelly, when he was stopped the bad cut over the left eye, which required 12 stitches to close. Peter Nieves said he came down to 126, but he feels his natural weight is right here at 135, and he's looking to give Juan Negron a tough fight tonight. Well, he looks like he's in excellent condition, Sam. I, I don't detect any uh, extra weight, any, any fat. He just looks like he's a well-conditioned kid. Peter Nieves, former two-time New York Golden Gloves champion, at 106 and at 119 pounds. And across, across the way is Juan Negron in only his second fight of 1993. Lost only once. That was back in September of last year to John Brown. Lost a 10-round decision. Nieves also has lost to John Brown an 8-round decision. Pearsall is the trainer of Juan Negron. He says Negron is maturing. And he feels since that loss, he's been a little more determined, a little more focused in the gym. You know, Johnny Pearsall was my fighter, Sam, and he was really a, a very great technician when he came to boxing. He really knew his way around the ring. And again, he was a light heavyweight and gave away weight and fought a lot of heavyweights. Nevis feels he has the speed to counter the reach advantage of Negron. I think in Negron's big advantage is that big right hand, Sam. If he lands that punch solidly, I think just about anybody will go. Nevis told us he wants to work inside, get inside that long reach, work on the body, and then go upstairs. He hopes to catch Negron reaching with that long right hand. Chopping left hand by Negron. Oh, step back. Punch out, boys. Punch out. When Negron tried that right hand, he ever slipped it and counted with a nice flurry. After that fight against Kelly in January, Davis was out 60 days, mandatory because of the TKO and the bad cut. Then uh, was set back to, with the death of his father in April, to whom he's dedicating tonight's fight.
And referee Averwa tried to chase Maladine. They paid no attention. Round two scheduled for 10. Why Negron had gotten into the top 20 of the world rankings before that loss to John Brown. That set him back. Trying to get some momentum going. Peter Nieves, who is an outstanding amateur, is a little pushing and gets a caution from Sammy Verouette, the referee. Nieves, every time he seems to be getting something going, has run into a, a problem and the loss. A loss to John Brown, an eight-round decision. A loss to Rennell Dahl, eight-round decision. Both those fights, Davis felt, and the loss to Kelly, where he had to come down and wait. He was less effective. And Sam, this is going to be a fight that the, the speed of Davis against the power of Negron makes for an interesting fight. It was moving well. Staying away from the power of Negron. They bang inside. Negron stands around six feet. Yavis is at 5'7". Uppercut that grazed Negron, and Yeves works again on the inside. Negron with a good combination for the body. And Yeves with a right-left combination that landed. But Yeves is doing any time he has the opportunity, he gets rid of those combinations. So far, he's boxing beautifully. What about Negron, Gil? What do you think he has to do here? Negro, Negron right now, he's being a little puzzled by Nieves' speed. He's got to faint a little bit, and he's got to throw a lot more body punches. Again, we, we always say that the, uh, the head moves, but the body does not. When you're having trouble nailing a guy with something, go back to the body, and he'll hit something. A lot of good movement by Nieves. He's been tough to find for Negron. End of round two. Round three. Juan Negron in the purple trunks. Peter Nieves in the white. Who would you give the first two rounds to, Gil? I gave the uh, first two rounds to Nieves. I thought he outsped the Negron and uh, landed a lot more punches than Negron landed. I'm with you. Come on. It'll be interesting to see if Negron gets wild, Gil, well, he as the has, fight goes on. Well, he did lose his composure near the end of that last round, so if they could show him a, uh, a picture of himself throwing punches the way he did at the end of the round, he wouldn't believe it. That's it. Punch out. Davis forcing his way inside and banging away. Landed a good right hand. Negron is backed up. Jaime Lancer back. Nieves, excuse me, Negron landed a solid left hook in that exchange. Wild swinging on the part of both fighters. They both missed. Negron with a right, Nieves with a left. Good right hand by Negron. Right on the button, and nothing happened. Nieves bangs the body on the inside. Negron right. backed up to the ropes. Right now, Nieves is out hustling Negron. The Flacco had better wake up. who told us earlier in the week this was going to be the fight of the night. And he's brought some action to the ring. Nieves counters after Negron missed a left hook. That left looked low. Sammy Verouette tells Nieves, that's your first warning, keep him up. Negron lands, missed that right hand. Well, Negron knows he's in a fight now, Sam. Just missing. Again, 
just missing. A lot of punches by Negron, but he's just off the mark and a little off balance, it seems to me, Gil. That's, again, Sam, he's winging those punches. Sharp jab landed by Negron. Negron drops his arms, and Yevers walks right in. He has to calm down, Sam. He has to regain his composure. Well, the maturity that Johnny Pearsall spoke about is not being displayed by Negron here. Neves banging the body, took a right hand from Negron. Again, that wild right by Negron left himself open, but Neves failed the counter. Peter Nieves. Eddie Aliano, the cut man, steps into the ring. The trainer is the man leaning in with the white jacket, Sinbad. Here's Nieves banging the body. Well, that's exactly what he's been doing. He's been out flurrying, out hustling. Negron. Negron landing the bigger punches, but Nieves by far the more. Look at these misses. Well, the, those are punches that Negron uh, wouldn't believe that he was throwing punches like that. So, there, there again, he's just completely lost his composure. That time it looked like he missed with the glove and landed with the elbow. Big, that can be effective. Punch. Wild name punches by right, Juan Negron. Name of this game, Franco. Don't know one. An important fight for him. As he seeks some recognition in the white, in the lightweight division. Peter Nieves in the white trucks. Juan Negron in the purple. Round four, scheduled for ten. Negron is just stalking Nieves. He's forgetting, he's forgetting to faint. He's forgetting to do anything to open up Nieves. There, there was a little faint before he snapped that left chair. That's what he had. Every now he's fainting. That's what he has to do. He has to try to open open up a quick kid like Nieves. And again, faint and punch to the body, in my opinion. Lands a combination, does Negron. Nieves backing off a little bit. Bangs the body on the inside. Negron tries to answer back. Nieves has done a job on Negron's body up to this point. There's some redness over the left eye of P Peter Nieves. Maybe even a little bit of a cut. That was where he was cut in the fight against Kevin Kelly. They required 12 stitches to close that cut. But it does not look good right now. A little bit of a cut over the left eye. Peter Nieves. Come on, boy. Step back. Step back. Stop punching. Stop. Clash your heads then. What does a feint do exactly, Gil? Well, a feint, you see how the other guy's going to react if you did throw the punch. And from what you see in his reaction, you change your punch. Come on, let me see some fighting, boy. Come on, punch out, boy. Punch out. Punch out. Right, stop punching. Stop trying to work on the inside. Grown countered the jabs of Peter Nieves. Left hook landed on the side of the head of Nieves. He tries to bang back. The Grown switching to southpaw, misses and lands a solid jab. Buckle the knees of the Grown a little bit. Another solid left hook landed. The Grown landing some good punches that have shaken Nieves a little bit. He looks like he's a little bit wobbly here. The legs are a little shot right now. But again, uh, Negron is expending a lot of energy, missing some punches. But the power may be telling here. Still only the fourth round, but the power of Juan Negron showing up here. Neves missing that overhand right. Come on, boy, punch out. You don't have a fly. Go home. 
coming down with the bell, ending round four. Let's take a look at some of this action from the last round. Now, you see the ever strapped against the ropes, and the groan is really winging punches. There's a snapping left hook. He switches to South Park, is back, and there's that left hook. It's a devastating punch. But again, Nagone expended a lot of energy, missed some of those punches, makes it a little tough. And Eddie Aliano had to do some work on the Peter Nieves' uh, left eye between rounds. A lot of Vaseline. Now Nagone is starting to use the left jab. He's being a little more patient. Knows he doesn't have to knock him out with one punch. Davis answers back with a good jab of his own. How, how do you have it scored through four, Gil? 3-1, Kevin Nieves. I'm with you. 39-37 on the 10-point must-scoring system. Davis has had a long layoff. My job, my job. His last fight in January went six rounds. Fight prior to that in December went only two rounds. And then you have to go back to April of 92 for the fight before that. So he's only had eight rounds of boxing in 14 months. And Sam, again, you know, when the, the going came out of the corner, started using the left jab very, very effectively. They must have thrown out in the corner. But now he's right back to trying to land a big bomb with the first punch. Not looking to set the guy up. A lot of redness around the left eye of Peter Nieves. Negron working inside. So is Nieves, and he backs Negron up. Nieves trying to get through the body and then go upstairs. There's the uppercut that got through by Nieves. And again, and he followed it with a left hook. And again, Negron is not throwing any punches. He's just in there with his hands up trying to block punches. He's the stronger guy. He's got to try to outpunch Nieves. Or at least push him off. Nieves picks up the movement again and avoids Juan Negron's punches. Working the body effectively is Peter Nieves. Seconds tick off in round five. That young man's been cheering, clapping his hands. He's having a great time. Some of the young fans you talked about. You're right, Sammy. Yeah, and you know, uh, not so many years ago, you couldn't bring anybody into a fight unless they were at least 14 years of age. I don't think he quite makes it. Does he? <laughs> and now you can see the groan loading up again, trying to get that power through. That was a good right hand on the gun. This is round six, scheduled for ten. Negron looking very determined, throwing a lot of punches. And the other's bleeding under. Yeah. Underneath that left eye. It's not in a dangerous place, though. Look, there's no blood going to go into the eye. Just open up. What about the swelling from something like that, Jim? Well, that's up to the corner when they have to use that end swell and they have to keep it on. I've seen these guys, they think the end swell is a miracle cure and they put it on for five seconds. You have to work on that all the time that you have. He's green mouth. But they have Eddie Aliano in there. He knows what he's doing. Do One of the best in the business. This is round six. And it certainly has to be mentally, I would think, would be bothered a little bit by the cuts because it was a cut that stopped his previous fight. A lot of bread and swelling and a cut under the left eye. A lot of redness over the left eye as Nieves tries to bang the body, comes in with a quick right Watch hand on the groan. The groan drew a caution from Sammy Virouette about the heads banging together. There's that long right hand in the groan and that hurt Nieves. Nieves backing off and that left eye is really looking nasty. The swelling mounting. The groan digging left hooks to the body. Well, you can see the difference in the power in the two fighters, Sam. Another warning, this time for holding from 
Sammy Verwet, who won the gold. Braun has thrown a lot of punches, and his stamina seems to be fine to this point. He's missed a lot of punches. And he's landed with some power. Negron is not using that left jab a lot more than he is, especially when he has a good target and an injured eye. Negron moving well. And right hand just missed by Nieves. Final seconds of the sixth round and concern for the left eye of Peter Nieves. Let's take a look and see what happened there. Oh, yeah. McGlone really did a job uh, with his head. Through six, heading out at school. I have a 4-2 for Nieves. 58-56. Same with me. Round seven scheduled for ten. Lightweights. One McGlone in the purple trunks. He's 19-1. Peter Nieves, 12-3. Well in there, and Eddie Allian, <laughs> Eddie Allian has done a good job on that, uh, on that ice. And going unlocked. Being a little too patient, you know. Again, uh, looking to land that bomb with the first punch, and that's not the way it's done. Come on, stop fighting. Ties up, Davis on the inside. his way inside and bangs the body and the, the thing that amazes me is Negron just does not punch back now he's throwing a couple of punches but he's the power puncher Nemes has been effective in bringing Negron's head down with those body shots beautiful combination beautiful combinations by Nemes solid punches great flurry by Nemes as it continues to work over Juan Negron and the groan stays on the inside. Wow. 
good uppercut in there. Um, he's, he's really using his superior strength, I guess you'd call it. He moves the Negron against the ropes. He doesn't have the punching power that Negron has, but he has that strength. Look, strength. Look at him use that elbow to move Negron back. Sinbad is the trainer of Peter Nieves. Gives him the final instructions, and Nieves runs out of his corner for round eight. Jumping for joy. What a knockout for Juan Negron. In the eighth round, the huge left hook. And he really had Nieves in trouble with, by using that jab a lot. Well, that's that, again, that was the key. He's, he had to set things up, Sam. You can't land a, that big punch from any kind of a distance against a good professional fighter. And Nieves this was an elusive target. Juan Negron is 20th win. And a very important one for him in a tough fight. We'll get the official announcement from Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Samuel Vuruet stops this bout 
at two minutes and 37 seconds of the eighth round, and a winner by a TKO, one El Flaco Negron. Negron. Spectacular finish as Juan Negron knocks out Peter Nieves with a huge left hook in quite a battle as they exchange pleasantries and congratulations Peter Nieves he fought a good fight we had him ahead on our scorecards but the power of Juan Negron came through Juan Negron wins it coming up is our main event Juan Negron with a big win Kevin Kelly is next. This past year has been a good year, and they've been tremendously supportive of Fight Night here on MSG Network and of the fighters and the charity, the Big Brothers and Big Sisters of New York City. We have a special presentation in the ring. Let's go to ring announcer Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for our Brute Fight of the Year bonus award presentation. As you know from joining us here at the Paramount or watching us on Madison Square Garden Network, the famed Brute line of men's toiletries has been the sponsor of our Fight of the Night program, which culminates tonight in a Brute Fight of the Year announcement. While each fighter receives a $1,500 cash bonus for his efforts in a Brute Fight of the Year, the big winner tonight is the Big Brothers and Big Sisters of New York City, which is receiving a $3,000 donation from Brute. Big Brothers and Big Sisters have been with us at every event this past year through complimentary tickets provided by Brute, giving these volunteers the opportunity to bring their partners to an event here at the world's famous arena. And now, Mr. Jay Contessa, the trade marketing manager for Brute, will now make the check presentation to Bruce Fabricant, marketing director for Big Brothers and Big Sisters of New York City. How about a nice round of applause? Now, ladies and gentlemen, on May 13th, in a fight that validated him as an elite contender in the welterweight division, Larry Barnes squared off with title veteran Harold Brazier in hopes that one more win over a highly regarded opposition would bring him a major opportunity. In an entertaining, tension-filled contest, Barnes earned a split decision victory at the metropolitan area earned a split decision and the metropolitan area media have voted that fight the brute fight of the year. Here to receive his check of $1,500 as a bonus is the number five ranked welterweight in the world, Mount Vernon's very own Larry Barnes. There's Larry Barnes. Harold Brazier's check was mailed to him in South Bend, Indiana earlier today. Let's hear it for him. Come on, let's do it. One more time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is Mr. Jay Contessa from Brute. Jay? Thank you, Ed. On behalf of the uh, Brute team, we'd like to thank all the uh, fighters for the entertainment for this year. It's been a great uh, sponsorship for Brute. We'd especially like to thank all the people from Big Brother for all their support and uh, wish them luck in the uh, year coming. Thank you. Mr. Jay Contessa, how about that? Let's do it one more time. Thank you. Maestro. The presentation, and that was the Brute Fight of the Year. Larry Barnes winning a split decision over Harold Brazier. We had Brazier winning that fight. <laughs> yes, we could. Good good tough fight here at Madison Square Garden a lot of memories of heavyweights heavyweights have been very important down through the years including the great brown bomber Joe Lewis
too bad most... When I meet Joe Frazier, this will be like a good amateur fighting a real professional. This yeah. will be like a kid out of the Olympics meeting the fastest heavyweight champion that ever lived. You're not fighting Oscar Bonaventure. You're not fighting Sonny Liston. You fighting Joe Frazier. Well, everybody knows that. That's not the point. That's the point. Joe, what's, what's your what? prediction? My prediction, the fight wouldn't go the distance. Oh, I'll stop distance. him. Stop me. You. How soon? What round? Look, don't, anyway, don't, don't let him out for you. One to ten. You be out there. I want to be out there. You be out there. Man, you, you ain't nobody. They you got, they say you can whoop me. Who got the top billers? They say you can whoop me. Who got the top billers? Billers. Come here. Let those billers. Wait till I get you in the lane. Wait. Please do that. Get your hands off of me. Do it.